Feeding time for the alligators. Welcome back viewers and subscribers to Travel with Real McCoy. We know that not everyone can afford to fly to their dream vacation destination. However, you can still travel locally. Regardless what state you live in, there are beautiful sites that you can explore. That being said, if you're in the Jacksonville, St. Augustine area and looking for a solo or family friendly event, why not stop by the Alligator Farm in St. Augustine, Florida? They have military and other discounts. So go ahead, check it out. They have alligators, snakes, birds. It's just a beautiful environment. You'll definitely enjoy it. So if you like this video, go ahead and like, share, and subscribe. And let's check out part one of the tour. It's feeding time at the alligator farm and the gators know it. All right, good morning everybody. Welcome to St. Augustine Zoological Park. My name is Jake. I'm joined by my coworker Haley here as well. And we just want to welcome you to the 12 o'clock feeding demonstration. Before we begin, we just want to go over a few quick safety reminders. If you guys do have anything not directly attached to your body, including cell phones, cameras, keys, wallets, souvenir cups, we just ask that you don't balance it on any of the ledges. Keep a nice tight grip on it and don't balance it on the wooden lip inside of the exhibit either. If something does fall in, this most likely will mean one of our alligators will come over and explore, which most likely means eating that item. Now, we understand, however, accidents do happen. So if you do happen to drop something in there, please do not hesitate to find myself or another staff member and we will try and retrieve that item for you. It all just depends on the safety at the time so we cannot make any big promises. Now, I do intentionally refer to this as a feeding demonstration because we are not going to be feeding all 36 alligators in this exhibit. If we did that, we would probably be here all night. However, you guys have probably caught on to the fact that they do know what time it is. So the ones that are interested are going to come over and try and get a little bit of a meal. And the ones that aren't are just going to kind of hang out and bask and hang out on the banks. So if one of your favorites is hanging out, not really eating or seeming interested, do not worry. That means that they may have eaten recently or might be waiting another day or two in order to eat. Now we do have two different items today that we are going to be feeding out. So we can actually talk to you a little bit about those. So the first one is going to be one of these pellets. So now it may not look like much, however, it's actually a pretty interesting pellet. So this is actually made by an exotic feed manufacturer known as Missouri. So we have crocodile biologists, veterinarians, as well as our own staff members come together in order to figure out what to put in these pellets so that these animals can live nice, happy, healthy lives. So now, you may not have heard of an exotic breed manufacturer before, but you probably have heard of their sister company, which is Purina. So they make your own dog and cat food that you use at home. These pellets are very handy for us because they do float on the water. So we're able to see them as well as the alligators are very easily able to see them. We can keep track of who is eating and who is not nice and easily by tracking these pellets. Now as awesome as these pellets are, we do also have a second feed item as well, which is a little bit different, which are going to be these nice, big, juicy wraps that we have. So this is what we call a whole food item. So everything that's in this wrap that's not in these pellets are what these animals are going to get. So the gut, the bones, the fur, all of that enriching material that they would naturally consume out in the wild is right in this wrap. So we can see if we can get one of these animals to jump up, see if anyone is interested in eating a wrap today. Alright, so as you guys can see, they can jump pretty high. Most of them are interested in these rats. So I'm going to throw some pellets in and talk to you guys a little bit about the history of our park. We have been open for over 120 years, so we have been around for a very long time. This, however, is not our original location. We actually were open originally right across the street where the state park is. However, in the 1920s, there were a slew of natural disasters, including hurricanes and floods, and that's why we decided to move over to where we are right now. 
1937, we were purchased by the Drisdale family who took us from having just American alligators to all 24 species of crocodilian in one place. We are one of the few areas in the world where you're actually able to see all of those on exhibit in one single location. Now I can tell you a little bit about these animals and their diets in the wild. So typically when they're growing up, they can eat a range of things. So crustaceans, fish, small mammals. However, when they get to be that full size, which could be about 12 to 13 feet, they're actually able to take something down as large as an adult deer. However, these alligators actually lack the ability to chew. So I'm gonna throw one on each side, see if maybe someone on land is interested in eating some of these rats and kind of demonstrate to you guys that they actually cannot chew because their jaws only move up and down. They do not move side to side. So when they eat it, you guys will see it kind of looks like they're chewing, but what they're actually doing is trying to position it in the right help of gravity that's going to go right down their throat. A problem. So they have started doing what TV has dubbed the death roll, which is basically their form of a fork and a knife. So we can see maybe one of these guys wants another rat. So someone else got it, so sometimes that will happen. So now they actually will do what we call the death roll. So they have 70 to 80 conical shaped teeth that their sole purpose is to puncture and hold on. So they'll actually grab a portion of that deer or larger animal and start to spin. And then they're actually tearing off a more manageable piece for them to consume. So they don't actually eat as much as you might think. They are reptiles, so they spend most of their day doing what we call thermoregulating. So since they are not moving around and being super active all the time, they're not burning a ton of calories that need to be replaced. So they're actually in a given year going to eat about 80 to 90 pounds of food. Now that may sound like a lot initially, however, if you do the math and break that down, 80 to 90 pounds of food would be like if you or I were to eat one sandwich a week for a full calendar year. So that doesn't sound like a whole lot. But for these guys, that is perfectly enough since they are not taking in a high calorie diet because they are not burning all those calories off. So any of you guys could actually out eat even our largest gators that are in this exhibit. Now I do have one last rodent that I'm going to feed out and then after that I'm just going to kind of dump in the pellets that we have left over. If you guys do have any questions at the end, please do not hesitate to come up and ask if there's anything else you want to know. I just want to thank you guys however for coming out and joining us today at the St. Augustine Alligator Park. All right, so thank you guys again for coming out right, and joining us today. If you have any questions, please do not hesitate to come out. That's awesome, wasn't it? Go ahead and dump the pellets, big girl, and I think we're going to go gift shop shopping. It's back in the stroller.
Don't forget to like and subscribe, and I'll see you at the next destination.